Oh gosh, why do I cough when I do my intro? Ah, okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Tamari here, and I'm bringing you guys another Ace Attorney part. We are on part 31, um, and we are just getting to the bottom of this whole uh, Yeti Yogi thing, and this case feels like it's getting to a close. Uh, pretty much, yeah. So let's get on with the suspect data. We were gonna select that last time, so here we go. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Indeed, it all say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Holy Jenkins. Holy! Exactly, Your Honor. He remembered the name of his fiance who committed suicide. That's why he named his parent after her! I see. Well, I guess that is possible. Objection. Really, man? Really? Bah, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? She, uh, I, I thought it was me saying that. She's only seven years old. Okay, I thought that was me saying that. <laughs> that's enough. Oh, I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What? What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop immediately. Oh crap! So we're gonna testify with this guy or? No, that's what I meant. Okay, here we go. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness—he doesn't remember. No. I thought it was him talking still. It's the old guy. No, it's okay. Whoa! Whoa! He's totes different now. Dude, you look taller. Uh, he's like serious mode, so. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. I'm acting for 15 years. But well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Damn. Cool. Order, order. Yanni Yogi. So, was it you who killed Robert Hammond and tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. Oh my god. Did we win? They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my show still standing. This year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait, wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth. What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Damn. So, like, we won, or...? Oh, karma. Where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is... Innocent, in this case at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? So we won? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? Nope. I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Kummer saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yeah, 
man, not guilty! Yeah, we did it, but somehow I feel like we didn't win. <laughs> that is all. The court is adjourned. Yay! Objection! What? What? Um, that sounded like Miles, but I'm gonna pretend it wasn't. <laughs> did, did someone say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth! Oh god, your honor. I object to your judgment. Wait, what do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. Revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess! He's going to say he's guilty! He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He's going to tell them he killed his own dad! Uh oh, what do I do? Raise an objection! Two can play at this game! The judgment has already been passed! I object to Edgeworth's outburst! Oh, damn it! Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. I would be wary. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. Damn it. Damn it, 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 We're just getting screwed up here. Okay, here we go. For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Any yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? The distance of the shot wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. Murderer. Criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. Damn you bastard. Why are you doing this to me? Order, order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah, it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago. Really, man? Really? I'm not. I didn't cut out for this. Okay. I think I think I would like to take a five-minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Please, for real this time. Let it be adjourned. <laughs> December 28th, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. I'm sorry, Wright. I just wasted all of your effort. Oh, man. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, pal! I mean you! Kill your dad! I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. There is murder no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! Uh-oh. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. Oh, damn. What, what are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it! He confesses... I mean, he confessed that he did it in court! Sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe you. I mean, I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belt. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. But, right. Damn, this is getting really intense. <laughs> Okay, it's December 20th. No, I'm just kidding. December 28th, 2.30 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. And I would like to resume my trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has... I clicked it before I could finish. God damn it, finger. <laughs> Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then through point... I mean, then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. 
the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional... Did I say that right? Yes, though it's unconventional for me, I like to run this one by the book. I say, does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Oh, Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Moyles Edgeworth take the stand? All right, here we go. Will the witness state his name or profession? Moyles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. Damn, here we go. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. Oh yeah, the nope. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi, wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Damn, that was pretty... to the point. Hmm. <laughs> and until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were struck in... Struck, really. We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination plays. I don't know why I got so sassy with the judge like that, the voice. Like, very well. Like, I got all sassy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> yes, Your Honor? I mean, yes, Your Honor. I didn't, there was no question mark. I don't know why I asked it like that. That day, I go into the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. Okay, I guess I should press everything. Maybe. What was the trial your father was... What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I my father lost, and Mr. Von Kahn was the prosecuting attorney. Everybody goes crazy in the audience. Oh, God! Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case. It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Mr. Von Karma's evidence. I, there was no Mr. But I put it there. <laughs> what is wrong with my brain? I need to go to sleep or something after this. I, just, I need to go to sleep. I almost started to sound like Von Karma after I said that. I need to go to bed after this. Okay, last episode, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so we went to leave, huh? Uh, no, that's quite struck. No, I can't talk. I'm about to cut this now. Okay, no. We gotta do this. We can't give up. So we went to leave. No, that's quite struck. Trapping us in the elevator. Okay, so. There were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator? Yes. Myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first. Then this time passed. No one came to help. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. Then... Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. Okay, what was it? What was it? <laughs> a pistol. I assume it was the bail of Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But it was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot and a scream. The gun fired once? Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, it echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. To this day?
this. I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. Here it is. What part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence? I don't know what it means. I better find out it quick. Wait, what part? Oh god, I guess we're going over everything. I don't even think we need this beginning part anymore. This stuff looks like it. Alright, let's check the case file and see if we can find anything. Alright! Case summary elevator. District court air in the elevator was oxygen depleted at the time. So no clues found on the scene. Victim data. Gregory Edgeworth. Defense attorney. Trapped in an elevator. Returning from a lost trial with his son Miles, age 9. One bullet found in heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. What? I think I found it! Didn't he just say that the gun was fired once? Like, hold on, let me go find it. Okay, but okay, dude. Okay, I picked it up, okay. There was a single gunshot. See, there we go. There was a single gunshot then a scream. So, yeah, no, derp. It says there were two shots fired, so bump. There we go. <laughs> Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I had the shot and the scream. And everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. Oh, I see. But that doesn't make sense. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. Oh, God damn it, man. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you could tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? I think it was victim data. I think it was. Okay, yeah, it was. Okay, I just totally guessed there. I did not feel like looking. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Yeah, I didn't think about that. Mm. Was there perhaps an the shooter who fired that second shot? Second shot. <laughs> Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when the second shot was fired. Oh crap, I didn't even think about that. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Mm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot was fired and had something to do with the case? What? Do we have any proof that the other shot had fired or something to do with this case? What is this? Found in the victim's body. Ballistic markings match the murder weapon barrel. Murder weapon, 22,500. Okay. Oh crap, this is the, like, the thing we had at the beginning. Oh crap, oh, let's go look over. Do we have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? Um, let's go back here and look. Okay, we said that murder weapon was fired twice. Traffic effect. Crap! Oh my gosh, you can't see uh, you can't see where I'm pointing, but there's a freaking bullet hole in the window glass thing of the elevator. And the way his father's laying, he got shot in the heart, it said. So that's impossible. So that means it was fired twice, and it looks like that bullet hole resembles an accidental shot, and then whoever then that means Yogi really shot him, but he said he was this. I don't know. Oh my god, I'm getting so confused. I'm so tired and I'm trying to like put this all together. Ugh, okay. We're just gonna say yes, because I think if we say no, we'll lose, so we'll just see where it goes from there. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. Wh what Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? What if it's that photo? The second firing of the pistol, because if you see the photo, and I, I wish my mouse pointer was enabled, but there's a bullet hole in the elevator glass, and then there's a bullet hole in Gregory Edgeworth's heart, and that's two bullet things, two shots, so 
I think this photo has something to do with it, so let's just present it. I mean, what can we lose? We got five penalty strikes, so we can't, we have nothing to lose, so let's go. Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. Uh oh, awkward silence. So, let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your, your Honor, please, please get a clue. Yes, yeah, seriously. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. Is it this bullet hole up here? I can't even make my mouse move up there. I think it is that bullet hole Take up that. here. Oh well, let's go for it. That should be obvious, the contradiction is here. Oh, I see, a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Yeah, take that. <laughs> Uh, order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went to Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. I just hit my microphone. <laughs> Mr. Wright, but who else could that someone else be? Murder, of course. Objection. Really, man? Way to kill my mood and my song. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary. That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. Oh, crap. If the pistol had a deep and fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He knows I have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Okay, so you can't randomly make bullet holes. Sorry, man. <laughs> Your logic is flawed. Order! I will have order! Mr. Ryan has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fire was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So, all we have is a single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. Tisk tisk tisk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I. It looks like I was wrong. Nick? The second bullet wasn't there. All my conjectures are for nothing! No! But you said you'd do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent! Sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won! I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. It seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No, I do not. So, you killed your father, though that was not your intention. Yes, I did. No! He's confessing! Very well! The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today! Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defense today right here! Right now! D 
day. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. My mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Alright. Guys, I gotta end the episode here on this weird cliffhanger. Uh, next episode, you already know I'm gonna pick. I'm picking. I have an objection. No doubt in my mind. So... Because I think if we have no objections, he's gonna get declared guilty for this and we'll lose. So, next episode, I'm putting on I have an objection and we will just do that. Uh, I hope you guys liked the episode. Sorry that I was kind of tired and didn't feel into the spirit of doing this. I mean, I try and my voice is hurting because I just did a previous episode before this. So, yeah. <laughs> Mark Karma's voice really kills it. So, um, hope you guys liked the episode. Uh, leave a like, favorite, subscribe, and I will see you guys later.